to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his fadl his grace his blessings with his mercy he gives us daily the ability tawfiq that there is a gathering of dhikr here alhamdulillah and we perform the dhikr of Allah but today a ajeeb, unique nur and light of dhikr is visible, alhamdulillah. And the reason for this is this, that alongside with us in this gathering of dhikr, there are youth that are here visible and gathered with us. And there are also people who from far have traveled and have come and stayed at this masjid. So this is a rahmah, mercy of Allah that Allah Ta'ala is giving to us, bestowing to us. So this is a special rahmah, mercy of Allah, alhamdulillah, that due to those people who are gathered here, we are benefiting, mashallah, due to them. So the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, in this gathering we are gathered, we are sat here, and from different people, different areas, people have come and attended, so we are just sat here and we are doing dhikr and we think, oh, what's different? But the real situation, Allah and His Rasul know best, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if we see in the hadith, Allah's Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does He state about this? So that we can realize and learn that the amal that Allah Ta'ala has given us, the tawfiq to perform, that how much Allah Ta'ala loves His servants. There is a hadith, it is narrated in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah in Sahih Muslim in Bayhaqi. And himself, Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, Hazrat Mulana Zakriya Sahib Rahmatullah has also included this in Fazail e Amal. And two great companions are the narrators, Hazrat Abu Sa'id and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And they have stated, and the meaning of the Hadith is such. That لا ينقدو قوم يذكر الله. That when such people gather in such a place, if there's a gathering, and their objective is just this to do the dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah, then what occurs? That Allah subhanahu wa taala immediately at that time on those people who are assembled, just like we are sat now, alhamdulillah, and especially these young children who are sat and or everybody else, that this moment in time, Allah's four rewards, treasures are descending on us at this moment. Allah subhanahu wa taala, His one reward and treasure is enough for us. Just one reward is enough. But Allah taala for this. Amal, this Amal of Dhikr Allah loves it so much and holds it so dear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not one but four rewards immediately He bestows and assigns to those people. The first reward to those who are sitting. It's a unique reward. Khiftum malaikati. Subhanallah, the words of the hadith. That what occurs is that the angels from all four sides they surround that gathering of Dhikr. Yes. Now here, there's a very deep meaning of this hadith if we, if we focus on it and the, and the muhaddithin, the scholars have done tashri, explain this hadith. And here, a very great mercy of Allah which is attained via dhikr. Listen attentively. So what is the reward? First, Allah's Rasul, what is the first, let's say what is the sunnah ilahi? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, company, sohbat, in this there's a, a very a big effect and deep effect of good company. So as a person, for example, he goes to a shop, the pie seller's example, if he stands 
in a perfume shop for a little while. And when he returns from the fragrance shop, then a little bit of fragrance has taken effect on that person. Or if for a little while you go to an impure place where there's some smoke or smell, and when he returns from that place, then the effect of that smell will also come onto him. So this is the principle of Allah. The principle that naturally in human beings, the company of a human being has a big effect on others. So just like here, this is the same principle that the pious elders have experienced in Jamaat. That in Jamaat is the same, just like young people, when they gather together, they are brought to the masjid. And then the biggest, uh, you can say, objective of our pious predecessors is that for a little while, bring these people, youngsters, for example, into the company of good people. So Allah Ta'ala's mercy may have mercy on the administrators of this masjid. MashaAllah, they've worked hard, they have collected and gathered, assembled the youngsters. And these two days, the holiday, they've made effort. The youngsters, however many they are, that they can come to the masjid and spend their time in the house of Allah. For this reason, so that they can take good company. And they sit with uh, good people and pious elders, so that the effect, the good effect of the elders can rub off onto them. Right. So here one principle is established totally and a very solid principle that the human being, if he wants to become good, if he wants to eliminate his negative traits and habits, then it's a very simple method that good people's company, he should start sitting with them, spend time with good people. So brothers, that we cry, we complain, my child, this has happened to him, my son, this has happened to him. And, but you cannot stop the era and generation. As the generation, as the time progresses, it will become worse. Is a hadith of Rasulullah Wasallam. As the time goes further away from me, then more uh, sins, etc. will come out. But Allah Ta'ala has also given the cure and solution. So today, instead of crying, complaining, my children are spoiled. They will be spoiled. They will be bad. They will smoke cannabis. They will commit zina. They will commit sins in this gathering environment in this environment but there's a cure solution what's the solution to take the company seed them in the company of good people so today the one sole method is his brothers that all of the bad things and evil that we see spread in the homes and the houses and there, there's no limit on every footstep there's evil and sin our children becoming like wild animals leaving the deen leaving religion we don't understand what shall we do that through speeches we cannot solve the problem. Remember this, through wise lectures we cannot solve the problem. Today the solution will come through sohbat only, which is the good company, the pious people. And further, the cure that Allah Ta'ala has established, then definitely that, that cure, that solution, it will take effect. Because Allah has created and instilled the effect in that solution. So we ourselves or our children, today we want to be saved from the fire of Jahannam and evil. Don't cry, oh this has come, the environment's bad, people are bad, etc. No, we shouldn't complain. We need to take the protection that Allah Ta'ala has established and seek the cure. It's a very simple, straightforward cure that you don't have to do anything when you go to that good company. Just sit in the company of the good person. That's it. So now this hadith, let's see that how did this reward come back? So what's the reward Allah Ta'ala has given? That that individual who sits in a gathering and performs the dhikr of Allah. Now the cure is coming for this day and age. For this era. That if you want to be saved from evil and bad, how will you be saved? Through dhikrullah. Remembrance of Allah. How? Allah SWT says, first rule I give to the gathering is that, that when a person sits in a gathering, a group of people and does dhikr of Allah from all four sides, the angels around them, there are so many angels, from the earth to the heavens, the gap is filled with angels. Now listen, that if you go to a itar shop, fragrance shop, and that fragrance rubs off onto you, go to a garden or, or a park and the fragrance of the flowers take effect. So the malaika, the angels, if they surround you and they embrace you, and if they sit in your company, you sit in the company, then will the angels' effect not take place on you? Not rub off onto you? So Mullah Ali Qari, rahmatullahi, is doing the the shri of this explanation, not me, he's explaining, beautiful point, what happens is that when a person does dhikr, then the angels, they surround the gathering, in other words, with the angels, so they've got company has started with the angels at that time. Right, so when we attain the company of the angels always due to dhikr Allah, if we do dhikr, the angels will surround us automatically because Allah Ta'ala has given the reward. 
in the morning do dhikr, evening do dhikr, whatever time you do dhikrullah, at that time this amal will start, that the angels will surround you. Alhamdulillah. So it's a straightforward path. If you want to stay with angels, you want friendship with the angels, you want to have their company, you want to sit with them, very simple solution, methodology, start doing the dhikr of Allah. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala, He's made the human beings, Jinnah, Ta'ala has made angels. The quality of the angels is that they are totally pure. They do not have the energy to commit sins. Allah has kept them pure. They don't lie, they don't backbite, they don't do zina, they don't uh, do anything wrong, they don't do any sin. They are totally pure and clean. So when we sit in their company, then all of their goodness will rub off onto us. So this is a very great reward that Allah Ta'ala has given for dhikrullah, that the angels surround the gathering of dhikr, surround the human beings. Khiftum Allah says, this is the reward because a person is doing dhikr. So Allah says, due to that dhikr, he's in the company of the angels. And all of the qualities and attributes of the angels start to come into the human being. The lying uh, disappears, and uh, lying disappears, and uh, committing fraud disappears, etc. Automatically, his islah, rectification is taking place. So now we, we've heard this, we've heard this, so there's nothing to cry about. If we want to become good and upright, we want our habits to become those like the qualities of the angels, then there's a very simple method Allah Ta'ala has explained in the Qur'an. That wherever the dhikr of Allah is taking place, where there's a gathering of dhikr, easily just go there and sit there with this thought, Allah wants to become good and pious, Allah wants the angels' qualities to come into me, then inshallah, inshallah, Allah is saying this, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying this, automatically that human being, the good qualities and righteousness will come into that person. So this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this masjid every day morning and evening dhikr is performed so that people can come, attend and improve themselves, send their children here. Yes, because send your children. My child, he drinks alcohol, cannabis, drugs. So bring your children and attend the dhikr of Allah gathering. But we know that our enemy is shaitan. He instills whispering. He doesn't let us come. He stops us, prevents us. Allah ta'ala has made the path, the method and in this day and age, to help us in this day and age, Allah has made that method, you would have to do nothing else, just come pray for Salah, then 30, 45 minutes, you sit in the dhikr of Allah, gathering. Alhamdulillah, Allah's promises are true, and that human being then will be, he will start to save himself from sins. So, this is, don't consider this as a minor action, this is not a small action. So the first reward, now let's look at the second reward that we are receiving with Allah's grace. First, is that the qualities, the angels are coming into us, rubbing off onto us. And which angels? These are the great angels that at this moment in time are friends with us and they are seated with us. And when you have friendship with the angels, then the angels don't leave you empty-handed. Then they do dua for you, for the individual. They do dua to Allah, Allah, he's become our friend. Morning and evening we meet him. And his difficulties make them go away, make his problems go away. And uh, his, his lawful requirements, Allah fulfill them. We don't know this. We just do say to people, do dua for me. Oh, uh, pious person, do dua for me. My brothers do dhikrullah. The angels will do dua for you. The angels. So brothers, will we do dhikr? Will we perform the dhikr of Allah? Now listen to the second thing that will happen. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu and the two Sahaba narrated that we testify that we've heard this. This hadith, it starts like this. Ashhadu that we are testifying who? Abu Rayra radiallahu anhu, Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu. Both these companions are testifying and they're saying that we are stating this is not wrong, this is what occurs. Doesn't matter how bad the environment is, whatever happens, how many enemies attack us, they try to spoil our children, give them this, do this, do this. Wallah Ta'ala says, My dhikr, wala dhikrullahi akbar, my dhikr is the greatest of all things. So we should have belief in this, brothers, in the words of Allah, have yaqeen, certainty Allah Ta'ala gives and bestows, assigns what He says He gives. The second rule, let's look at it. Khushatul Rahma, Mukhashiyatul Rahma, Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala says, what is the second reward? Allah Ta'ala says, my rahma, my mercy, when a person sits and does the dhikr of Allah in this way, then Allah says, my rahma khashiyat, it envelops, it hides, it takes into security, those people say, look, a great rule, the rahma, everything is due to Allah's rahma. We won't go into paradise due to our deeds, it will be due to Allah's rahma. Allah's rahma is what will take us into Jannah, not amal, not deeds. Everything is due to Allah's rahma. We are sat here now, we're doing the dhikr of Allah. This is the rahma of Allah, the merciful. It's not our planning. 
It's not our planning. We cannot do anything due to our planning. Everything occurs due to Allah's rahmah. That even if a splash of rahmah was to come to us, that's enough. That will cool down the fire of Jahannam. So Allah says, the source, what is the source? If you want to attain my rahmah, what's the way to attain that? Dhikrullah. This hadith. Khashiyatul rahmah. Not just this. That I give rahmah mercy, rather, Allah says, I envelop, surround that gathering with rahmah. I'll give you an example. For example, if you see that with you, you will have experienced this. That, uh, for example, you go into the lap of your mother, or some child is feeling very cold. Then how the mother takes hold and embraces the child. The mother will hide his feet, and with her shawl, she'll hide his face and mouth, so that the child doesn't experience cold in any way. So Allah says, Khashiyat rahma Allah says, I also hide my servant, just like the mother does. From what? From all bad things, from all evil, from difficulties. Allah says, I hide, and I, can, I seal and, and conceal that servant of mine, via my rahma. So, Allah's rahma has come, the angels have surrounded the gathering. What else do we need, brothers? From the dhikr of Allah. So we've gone to dhikr. And dhikr is a great thing indeed. Allah Ta'ala says, I've put the taste and enjoyment into dhikr. Automatically in the dhikr of Allah, there's an effect. So the angels surround the gathering. Allah's rahmah descends. Then another reward, a jeeb, unique reward Allah Ta'ala gives on top of these two things. Subhanallah. Wathkuru. Allah says, these are the words of the hadith that come after. Ajeeb, unique reward that comes after that. Allah Ta'ala says that the I with this jamaat have so much love, so much affection with that jamaat that's doing dhikrullah. Where is Allah? Where are we, His servants? Imagine that with this action that they've just gathered together, assembled, and they're remembering me doing my dhikr. Allah says, I love them so much then due to that. that what do I do? Allah says that... The scholars have written the tafsir, ajeeb point. That what is the meaning of this? Who is this? Where are they? What are they doing? They're doing the Quran. Allah says, the arwam, the anbiya, the mursaleen, and awliyallah and muqarabeen, the angels, the special gathering that Allah Ta'ala holds. Separate. So tell me what a great word. Allah Ta'ala says that in a separate gathering, a unique gathering, Due to this gathering of dhikr of these people, remember me, Allah says, what do we do in that select gathering? I mention those people and praise them that these are my servants who are doing my dhikr and remembering me. So these are the people, Allah says, so here the point that comes out is very big. Is that when Allah Ta'ala and, and praises to the anbiya, the mursaleen, the arwa, the ru of the awliya and the muqarabeen, select angels, then all those people start to recognize that individual and they start doing dua for those people who are doing dhikr and they become famous that these people or this person is the beloved servant of Allah Allah loves him so the whole makhluk and creation starts to recognize that person so brothers this is the dhikr of Allah that Allah Ta'ala has given so many rewards that doesn't matter how much sickness is spreading out there are disasters for example, Allah says, just said one solution, one response, especially the dhikr in the morning time, like after Fajr Salah, Allah Ta'ala says, when my servant, these are also words of the hadith, you hear this and you read this, that this is just for reminding, I'm sharing these points with you, you already know these things better than me, this is just revising the subject matter, so that we don't become lazy, so that we can firmly Grab hold of the benefits of this action. Dhikr of Allah is a great action indeed. Allah says, when I see, when a servant of mine does dhikr, like for example, after Fajr Salah, we say, make this a habit in your life. That after Fajr Salah, when my servant Allah says, sits and does my dhikr a little bit, a woman or a man, especially in the home, the women, the men do dhikr in the masjid, they sit down. You see, that this is the habit of pious people always. This is the habit of their life. You will see, the great pious predecessors, this was the habit in the morning, they did the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. Why? Because the hadith were present. Allah Ta'ala says, when my servant performs my dhikr in the morning, then I become his waqeel, representative, and I protect him all day long. So instead, that person who does dhikr in the morning, he doesn't need to be worried about illnesses, and diseases, and difficulties, and problems. And worries, Allah becomes the waqeel for the person. And but when shaitan stops, you no, 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 don't need to do dhikr, do something else now. There's other important things. So we are inviting problems with our own hands. Allah has opened the doors, given us a solution. Come a little while, sit down, do my dhikr. So Allah Ta'ala starts to protect that individual. 
So for us, what's our biggest desire? That Allah's Nabi Wasallam loves us and we love Him. Yes, that if the Prophet of Allah Wasallam starts to love an individual, imagine what that individual will be. So what did Rasulullah Wasallam say? A small hadith I'll present in your service. That he is my most beloved and dear in individual. Who's saying this? The Holy Prophet Wasallam. That the most beloved person to me, the person that I like the most, we say, Oh, Oli Allah, brothers, Oli Allah, they don't have horns on their heads. It's through their deeds that you see that they are the beloved servants of Allah. Remember this. Their deeds, actions, explain. So Allah's Nabi Islam said that he, this person, I like him the most. I love him most of all. Oh, Prophet of Allah, who's that? That that individual who after Fajr Salah, pray Salah, and for a small while, Short while he does the dhikr of Allah, Rasulullah SAW said, I love him so much. Indeed, the doors open, brothers. So very straightforward learning here, that if you want to become the beloved of Allah, then why do we talk about different things? Do this action, do that action. All of these are a waste. Do that action with which the Holy Prophet SAW himself has prescribed the path to us. We should do the dhikr of Allah after Fajr in the masjid. The women folk for a while do tasbih at home, do the dhikr of Allah. Allah's Habib Sassam, and he, you, you will have that connection with him, and he will hold you dear and beloved. And listen to another hadith that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu stated, that when a person sits in the morning and does dhikr Allah for a short while, because we're doing dhikr of Allah, I'm explaining these hadith to you, that when a person does dhikr of Allah in the morning, now here, Allah Ta'ala, He has put into our account the good deeds that by by some way we've arrived here, but we are the, to being grateful to Allah is then to ongoing keep this action existent in your life. So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that that I like this. That if Allah's Habib, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, likes something, I'm telling you the meaning. He said, I like this so much. I like this so much that whatever there is in this world, this universe, whatever the universe, whatever you see, what it contains, what is present, one hint: wealth. Money, houses, assets, businesses, kingdoms, big uh, ambitions. These are big things for us, isn't it? I want this house, I want this car, and this is important. So Allah's Nabi Islam has balanced this out now. Subhanallah, equilibrium. Or beyond that. We, we, we give our life for these things. But we, we give our life for those things that will end themselves. Those things that will die. We give our life for those things. But Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us the balance. There's an imbalance here. You need to balance it out. That everything that is here in the world, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what I like, I like this thing. In comparison to this, in opposition to the kingdom of this world, in opposition to, to gold and silver and big ambitions and desires. In other words, our eyes, Rasulullah is opening eyes, don't die for this world. This world will finish itself. As soon as you die, your goods will be distributed. They won't be in your account. You won't take one penny or no money with you once you pass away. Nothing. Come to what I like, said Rasulullah Like those things. So Rasulullah said, I don't like running after the dunya. That even if you take the whole world and what it contains, they give it to me. But what do I like best of all? That I sit for a short while after Fajr Salah and I perform the dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah. So these things the world they will end, they will be finished. Rasulullah said they won't be useful for you, but if you do the most beautiful thing say subhanallah once and half of your scale will be filled. The scale of deeds. If you say Alhamdulillah, then half of the scale fills also. Then you say Alhamdulillah. The scale will the scale will fill up again. This is hadith. So small kalamat but very, a lot of value for these. We can't see it, but because Rasulullah Sallallahu has told us this, so we have a belief in this, beyond belief. And those who believe something, they do that action. And those who don't have the yaqeen, they don't do the action. From here, it goes and it leaves here. But those who have yaqeen and certainty, then with conviction and regularly, they start the action. My brothers, those who are present here right now, I invite you that if you just alhamdulillah make this a habit in your life that we start the day with tasbih of astaghfar one tasbih astaghfar one tasbih of darood sharif one tasbih subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al azim and ten tasbihs Allah 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 then alhamdulillah all these rewards you will get during the whole day so you do one tasbih astaghfirullah, one tasbih daru sharif, one tasbih subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al din, ten tasbihs, Allah, Allah, Allah. Do ten tasbihs of this. So brothers, 
that there are many kitabs and books filled uh, with the explanation and praise of the dhikr of Allah. So if we do amal on this, this is enough for us that we today, I've got a little reminder that we are negligent and lazy. We have left and shunned the dhikr of Allah. We are losing out from a lot of things due to leaving dhikr of Allah, if you think. But there are many people who are ashiks and lovers of the dhikr of Allah that they give up their sleep, they travel. Our Mulana Sahib has come from London with this niyyah that I will be gathered and included in the gathering with dhikr of Allah. There are people like this. Why? Because he has qadr. He appreciates, will Allah Ta'ala leave them free without anything? No, that just for the dhikr of Allah, he travel in the night and he persevere through the difficulty that I'll go in the morning, that majlis of dhikr, I will sit there. So this is amal. These people, they will be presented. And it's not through words that you get the benefit. It's not through words you should make. Niyyah, intention, the di- meaning of dhikr Allah is not that we leave everything else in our life. We leave recitation of Quran, we re- re- leave nafal salah or tabliq or talim. No, it doesn't mean this. This is an amal that Allah Ta'ala has prescribed that we need to do regularly and, and, and grab hold of it. And Allah will help us in everything else that we do. So... Alhamdulillah, this is the majlis of dhikrullah, few words that Allah Ta'ala has enabled me to say, may Allah give me the tawfiq as well, that we can do amal on this. And a person, that if he wants to be saved from the fitna, turmoil, disorder, we are in the era of fitna, the era of Dajjal has started, the fitnas of Dajjal are coming. You know this, this coronavirus, one injection, second injection, this is adab, punishment. This is like the hadith. I said that when a person does dhikr, Allah Ta'ala's rahmah envelops a person. So where there's rahmah, mercy, there's no adab. Remember this. That where the dhikr of Allah is present, there will be no sickness. There will be no difficulty. There will not be magic there. There won't be hasad, envy there. There won't be malice there. Always you will get the goodness. There always there will be sickness and evil and fighting, quarreling, magic, facade in the homes. There where there's no mercy of Allah. Always this is the case. Remember, where there's no mercy of Allah, then the ghazab punishment of Allah comes. And this is the form that this, in different ways, person runs away from home. He goes out. His wife somewhere else. The children are somewhere else. House is destroyed. No job. No business. Etc. This all ghazab punishment of Allah. Why does this occur? Because person's running after sins and he's far from the dhikr of Allah. And if we want protection from all of this, then Allah's rahmah comes. Allah's mercy comes. And we get protection from all these things. Then Allah Ta'ala has put this in every generation. Very simple methodology. Allah's rahmah, attain it. And what is the door to Allah's mercy? Dhikrullah. So that's it. So to summarize, is that if we, if we want to eliminate our sins, everyone wants this, to leave sins. We want to live dirty, impure actions, we want to eradicate anger, etc. Number two, if we want Allah's protection, if we want rahmah and mercy, and we want to be saved, from bad things, evil things. And number three, if we want to become the beloved, from the beloved servants of Allah, look how many rules there. Are. If we want to become the beloved servants of Allah, Mahmubin, subhanAllah, then do one action, is continue to do the dhikr of Allah. That's it. So be careful of one thing, that shaitan is present. Nafs is there, the desires are there. And they will make your yaqeen belief weak. No, 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 I've done dhikr for so long, it doesn't benefit me. Oh, leave it, not necessary. In this day and age, we don't need to do it, etc. Totally not. The Quran and the Hadith, what they have proven and told us clearly, and Allah's Nabi some and the noble companions have demonstrated that, then that is confirmed. Just like the sun and the moon, they rise and they said, we can see that, this is the deception of, deception of nafs and shaitan makes us weak. And the pious predecessors have stated that the name of Allah doesn't matter. Even if you are lazy, you recite Allah's name. As in Gangohi Sahib Rahmatullah, I'm sharing his statement with you, great shaykh he was. He said that once, as Ilyas Rahmatullah and as Shaykh al say that we were sat in his khanka. And I heard this word from my own shaykh teacher, because he spent time there. Uh, Hazan Gangohi Sahib's Khanka, my Sheikh, my teacher spent time in the Hazan Gangohi Sahib's Khanka. And they said that once Hazrat Ilyas Rahmatullahi, who is the Amir of the Jamaat, the founder, and as Mulana Zakri Sahib, who is the, his nephew, they were both there. And this was the generation of Hazrat Gangohi Sahib. And in his final days, his eyesight was weak, he couldn't see. So he came out from his room, Hujra, and it was very hot time of the day. And he said, is there anyone sat here? Is anyone sat here outside? And they said, we are both. And they wrote this waqi, Hazrat Zakri Sahib wrote this in his kitab as well. That suddenly we both stood up and said, Hazrat, we are here. 
And Hazrat Ilya said, I'm here. And Zakri is with me. We are both present. Please instruct us. He said, no, tell me. And he had gushed maybe at that time. And inspiration, he said, listen to me. He know that these two individuals were going to do great personalities. We're going to do great work of deen. They'll make a jama'ah that we're going to spread the, the message across the world. So he gave the message to them. So that they could take this message and spread it out across the jama'at in the world. He said, listen carefully to me. Listen carefully to me. These were his words. And I heard this from my husband. He said, listen carefully to what I'm saying. Who's saying this? Hazrat Sheikh Gangohi Sahib Rahmatullahi that doesn't matter how lazy you are there will be a generation where shaitan will deviate people there's no benefit of dhikr doesn't matter how much ghaflat and negligence and laziness you, there is and you say the dhikr of Allah but the name of Allah definitely will take effect definitely will have effect so there's different ways Allah Ta'ala gives to someone immediately Allah gives sometimes Allah says with of a delay I will give to that person but don't leave that action what I see is that some people that come with great zest and fervor then they step back after Allah Ta'ala doesn't like people who step back or do a U-turn Allah says they don't have belief in my Quran they don't have belief in the words of my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, that this person hasn't got istikamah he's not regular he comes and then after he leaves he says oh there's no benefit I came for this reason I wanted this in the world I wanted this in the world I had that through the kid you'll get this and that nothing's helping me no Allah Ta'ala tests people through different ways just stick to the good action because if Allah Ta'ala said something it will definitely happen innaka la tukhliful mi'ad Allah Ta'ala's words will never end up without being uh, coming into action so remember always in the life of a person there are ups and downs but don't leave this action never leave this action Otherwise, he will be included amongst those who are losers. Allah says, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that those who do the dhikr of Allah, they are such people who remember Allah, the women and the men, they are such a calm that they can never lose out. So Allah Ta'ala, such people he doesn't like, he dislikes people that when they start an action, a good action, after doing it for a small while, then they give up, they lose hope. Oh, there's no benefit to me. Allah totally doesn't like people like this. Rather Allah becomes extremely unhappy with such people. There's an event, an incident, Rasulullah said there was a companion in that age, and that he used to pray tahajjud salat. After a while he left that. Rasulullah said, I dislike this, such an individual who does, who shuns an action. That that they have no hope in Allah now. And if you lose hope in Allah, then what does that human being stay as? So don't think this, this will occur. Definitely I will get the benefit. I will acquire it because Allah Ta'ala has promised. So never leave that action. So let's pray to Allah that Allah Ta'ala to all of us gives us the tawfiq ability to practice upon all of this that we have heard. Now we come to the point, to the real uh, reason for which purpose that Allah Ta'ala has gathered us and all the rewards we need to attain these. Allah has given us a gathering, He's given us time, and this is the time after Fajr. We prayed Fajr, Allah has allowed us to pray Fajr, Alhamdulillah. We've sat down after that, so now we'll do dhikr of Allah for a short while. And normally, dhikr of Allah, we do it silently, but today the gathering is quite large and there are a lot of children, so we'll do loud dhikr today. We'll do loud dhikr today. So that in this way, that every person can recite those verses. Some people won't recite the kalman. So in loud dhikr, there's a lot of enjoyment. Subhanallah. Everything gives in, uh, its different effect. Barfi sweet, the gulab jamun has its own taste, the laddu sweet has its own taste. Everything has its own taste. Subhanallah. Nobody who eats barfi can say, I don't want to eat the laddu. He'll say, no, give me laddu as well, I want the taste of laddu. He'll say, I, want, I also want the gulab jamun. So in the same way, we will do silent dhikr and we will do loud dhikr. Because they have their own separate unique taste. So when you do loud dhikr, don't be uh, stingy. When you call out to Allah, call out with a lot of love. And recite that kalama in such a way. Just like Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ When you remember me, Allah says, I remember you. So I'm remembering Allah at this moment in time and I have to uh, um, respond to that. When I hear Allah's name. And second way, is that in the gathering, we should sit together, don't spread out too much, sit, join together, so we can do loud dhikr together, come close together, come into the halka, into the circle. Uh, stand up and make a halka, uh, a proper gathering, come in front. Now this is a great majlis that is about to start. Remember this, that this is all about making yaqeen, strengthening the faith. When your faith is strengthened, then you do the action. So make the yaqeen strong, that this majlis, that we're doing, that everything we've discussed, that the, the whole heavens and the earth will be filled with the angels, Allah will be proud in the heavens, Allah will mention us in the heavens, will become the beloved servants of Allah, the angels will surround us. In other words, we are now totally a unique form of creation, have total belief in this, and 
And what a great point here. The soon as we are free from above, the announcement will be made that go, all your sins are forgiven. This is the majlis that we are in now. So we're doing loud dhikr. We'll do loud dhikr, the sleepiness will go, you'll be hungry, then you'll get breakfast as well after that. If you don't do loud dhikr, you won't get anything. Whoever doesn't speak, then consider he's not included in the dhikr. What I say, after I say this, recite those kalamat. And close your eyes and do this dhikr. The lights will be dimmed and consider it's just me and Allah and nobody else. This is how you do dhikrullah. Yes, you are independent. You go to the khanka, then you will realize that how dhikr is performed. Alhamdulillah. This is how dhikr is performed. As a Zakariya Sahib, when he did dhikr, hosted dhikr, the whole village, the, the, his voice would vibrate and reverberate. Such is the dhikr. Are you all ready? Shall we do dhikr of Allah then? Okay, dim the lights please. I will recite the kalamat and you repeat and follow after that. Allah says, I like my servant to walking, sitting, lying down, sleeping. Always he remembers me. What is that method? To remember Allah, it is called muraqaba. Make this uh, regular in your life. If a human being attains this method of doing dhikr, alhamdulillah, then always he remains a dhakir. Remember, in your hand... And your efforts are in the world, but your heart is focused on your Lord. If you, if you start doing this zikr in the heart, so it is so great and valuable zikr, inshallah. All the time you do the zikr. And it's easy than all zikr, because if you do the zahar zikr, you need some strength for that, like we have done now. It's much, inshallah, tasteful. But this zikr is so nice, very comfortable, and you're not doing anything with the tongue, with the louds. So everything's then you use heart. And it's direct good to your heart. If your heart changes, everything is changed, mashallah. It depends everything on the heart. The thoughts create in the heart, the evil thoughts come in the hearts. So you should control your heart by zikr Allah. And that's the only way of doing the zikr. This is called barak by zikr. How you do it? Because best thing is that you learn this zikr from Sheikh. So it is immediately when you learn the zikr, your heart starts doing the zikr. It's so big magic, alhamdulillah, in this zikr. So as Sheikh gives the zikr, he teaches the zikr, on the moment you start doing the zikr, your heart, it's out of your control. You start doing the zikr, it's called kalbijariya. The, the heart which do the zikr every time is called kalbijariya. So best thing you take from some Sheikh. And tell them to the Sheikh, I want to learn this zikr. He will teach you in a minute this zikr. If anybody wants to learn this zikr, inshallah, come forward, I'll teach him. Without any cost, no problem. Only I need dua of you, inshallah. So, it's so beautiful zikr. And then you make your routine doing this every day, yourself. I teach you, then you start doing this zikr. So what's happened? Your heart starts continually saying, Allah, 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 Allah. If you're not saying anything by the tongue, you're not moving your tongue, but your heart will be saying, Allah, Allah, Allah. I remember one story. I was in Pakistan. I'm sitting doing the zikr in the mosque. Somebody come, Sheikh, teach me the zikr. So I teach me the zikr. Unfortunately, become ill and within a week he go to the hospital, admitted in the hospital and somebody told me he's in very serious condition. And this not mean that some more people see this thing, how he died. Allah so went to him in the hospital to see him there. So he was in the bed. And it was the last moment of this person. He was going from this world to the other world. But this happened with everybody. How is going with this zikr, which I'm telling you, this zikr, the kapi and this kalbi, if you start that. <coughs> he opened his eyes, doctor surrounding him, and look everybody and says, my heart is saying, Allah, 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 and he's moving, he's saying like that. I can't control my heart, my heart is saying, Allah, 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 and he closed eyes, and he's died. It's the, I've seen this thing in the hospital. My dear friend, this is the time we can do something, we learn something, which is very easy. And this gives the guarantee you will die with the kalma, with the Allah, name of Allah, with this zikr. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the message to us that we should learn all this zikr. 
So you, I invite you, every one of you, mashallah, because you are traveling from the Lord, from one city to the other city. And for Jamaat is very good for that, because you always go to the Jamaat and you have the plenty of time for that, and loneliness. You sit down there after Jamaat, doing Taleem, everything. You spend your own time, start doing the Marakwa. And award, reward your Read in the Alhamdulillah in the book, what's the reward of this hidden zikr, for Kalbi zikr, 70 times more reward than the older zikr. <laughs> 70 times more. And it's also one of these that, and, uh, and the judgment day when the people was going to come to the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him, give, show the amal. So the angels will show all the amal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like these angels with Kavan Karman Katmi, which is sitting on our shoulders. Allah says, give me some more amal. He says, Allah says, there is nothing left. We, give, we wrote everything which you have sent to us and we give to the, this, this, this are the amal of this person. He said, no, you don't know, it's one amal. This was a so great amal, you could not write that. It's directly, directly coming to me and I write it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that. He says this person used to do the hidden zikr. He used to remove in the heart. So this was so great, so great zikr that I was getting this zikr directly to me, to me and I am writing for him. So this is such a great zikr. Allah will himself give the reward that angels cannot record. It's called muraqabah. How long does it take? How much effort? Go learn this zikr from a wali Allah, a friend of Allah. He will teach you this and do this zikr then. And make it a habit in your day, morning and evening. I will sit down 10 minutes, do muraqabah. The rest of the time, always focus on your heart. And you will see that when you focus on your heart, Allah, 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 you will see it remembering Allah. So now we will do this dhikr, muraqabah dhikr, the taste I will give to you. And the passion, desire, if you feel like it, then I can teach you this dhikr. And I will explain to you that this is how you do this dhikr. Most of people, they are sitting, and alhamdulillah, they have learned this dhikr. And they change their life by zikr Allah. So it becomes easy to leave the sins and bad things. Then. <clears throat> so how to do this zikr? Very easy method. Close your eyes, focus on your heart. And in your heart, without moving your tongue, with the beat of the heart, the heart also has a tongue, isn't it? The heart also speaks. With the tongue of the heart, we won't speak verbally. We don't say anything about our tongue. Hold your tongue. Start thinking in your heart. Like your heart is saying, Allah, Allah, Allah. That's called the meditation. To make the practice of that. So in this, sometimes, Allah says, so Allah says, when you do muraqabah, then sakina, Allah says, descends on the heart. Allah says, and sakina is such a thing that you cannot explain. That jannah, it's a reward of paradise that Allah Ta'ala has kept aside for the people of paradise. Sakina. So Allah Ta'ala, only to those who do dhikr in this world, Allah gives just to them. Sakina, the reward of paradise, it's for Jannatis, that they, Allah says, in the hereafter, I'll give Sakina. But those who do dhikr of Allah in this world, Allah says, solely for them, they, I give this unique reward that in their heart, I allow Sakina to descend. So for a short while, we'll do muraqaba, close your eyes, focus on your heart, and in your heart, Allah, 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 recite. Call out. The greatest name is Allah's greatest dhikr, and the greatest dhikr is to say Allah's name, there's no one greater than Allah. Remember, that everything is formed from the dhikr of Allah. So we stop everything, we just recite Allah's name in our heart. Allah, 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 we will do this. Let's start this, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, as-salamu alayhi wa sallam, wa 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 alayhi wa sallam, اللهم ربنا اعطنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب العشر وقنا عذاب الميزان وادخلنا جنة ما علم العرج عزيزة يا غفاج رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا من لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنا ولا لم نغفر ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ سعيتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على تعطيك اللهم صبتنا الإيمان ورمتنا الإيمان وحشنا الجهم القيامة مع الإيمان اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم مستقبلنا بسنته ونقامنا بمحبته وحشنا في صبرته يا كريم يا كريم اللهم نسلك الأفلا في المقاطع الدين والدنيا العالمة اللهم احفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا والآخرة 
اللهم أحسن عقبتنا في جنود كلية وجنة من قسطن رابعي اللهم إنا لذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا قاضي الهجات دكت هجاتنا يا دافش المليات دفع بلياتنا يا شافي المراز اشفى مرازنا يا شافي المراز اشفى مرازنا يا شافي المراز اشفى مرازنا يا لا تقن فضل قمس يا مرد غناهكم ما فرماتي صغيرة وكبيرة غناهكم ما فرماتي يا لا جهم سيغلتي مني من ملا ما فرماتي يا لا أبني رحمة من هم إلى هم من هم ولا يا لا هماري نبادتهم كو كبول فرما هماري دعوهم كو كبول فرما हमारे जिक्र को कबूल फरमा हमारे दीन की मेहनत को कबूल फरमा मेरे मौला तुम पे फजल फरमा या अल्लाह अपनी रहमत वाला मामला फरमा या रहनी हमारे गुनाहों को खत्म फरमा दे या अल्लाह हमारी बुरी आदतों को खत्म फरमा दे या अल्लाह नेक लोगों की सहमत नसीब फरमा या अल्लाह हमारे घरों में सुकून नसीब फरमा या अल्लाह बीमारियों से नागानी मुसीबतों से परेशानियों से बलाओं से या लाफात से हमारी हिफाजत फरमा या अल्लाह हमें इनामत अता फरमा बरकतें नसीब फरमा नमतें नसीब फरमा या अल्लाह हमारे घर के अंदर बरकतें नसीब फरमा मेरे मौला औरतों को हमारे बेहतर फरमा दे یا اللہ ہمارے عدوں کی اصلاح فرما دے یا اللہ ہمیں گناہوں سے بچا لے یا اللہ ہمیں گناہوں سے بچا لے برے ماحول سے بچا لے یا اللہ ہم سے دین کا کام لے لے دین کا دائی بنا لے اے میرے مولا تو پہ فضل فرما دے یا اللہ جیسے جیسے پورا زمانہ ہے میرے مولا تو ہی رحم فرما تو ہی کرم فرما یا اللہ تو ہی ہماری حفاظت فرما ہماری ایمانوں کی حفاظت فرما یا اللہ ہماری ایمانوں کی حفاظت فرما یا اللہ ہماری ایمانوں کی حفاظت فرما یا رحیم یا کریم تو اپنا فضل فرما یا اللہ اپنے حبیب کے صدقے سے ہماری اس مجلس کو آج قبول فرما یا اللہ اس کا سواب تمام ہمارے ماں باپ کو تا فرما مرمین ہے تو ان کی قبروں کو روشن فرما زندہ ہیں تو ان کی مرم میں برکت نصیب فرما ہمارے ساتھ اسا تزاگ فرما ہمارے مرشائے کو تا فرما یا اللہ تمام مومین و مومنات کس کا سواب تا فرما ہم وصل اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ